it's my dream to sail this 42 foot catamaran across oceans and obviously to do that I need a mast and a mast base so in this week's video you're gonna see me install this here mast beam which is absolutely humongous and uh, yeah get a few more steps closer to that dream <laughs> Mum and dad have gone. They were here for about four or five days and now my interior is looking so clean, so fresh. The engine boxes still need a lot of work, but yesterday I received my mast beam. Obviously I have the mast foot as well, but the beam is absolutely huge. I actually only need about 2.6 meters for the mast beam. The beam is 6.5. So I actually have then a secondary cross beam. So I could put that at the aft of the boat. This is a huge proper structural beam made from Douglas fir which is naturally very rot resistant and it's made up of planks laminated together obviously with exterior adhesive. I only need from here to here. I was getting frustrated trying to find this sort of wood uh, in any local wood shop so I just got it. It was not cheap but I lost patience and I just bought it and I feel really good about it. <laughs> So yeah, I just need that piece, and that's gonna be my mass beam, obviously. The rest, I mean, this thing is absolutely huge, so I don't think, I don't know. I was thinking about using it for a back beam, an aft beam, something I can put a big swim platform thing on, or I want to make the boat as light as possible. With catamarans, the lighter you are, the safer you are, uh, the more likely you are to dance over the big waves rather than get stuck, capsize, that sort of thing. So the lighter, the better, and this thing is absolutely huge, so. With the other bit, I'll have a little look at it, maybe work it into an after beam or maybe sell it. So if anyone's looking for a beam like this, I'll give you a good price, but it's not cheap. All right. Thing that I learned from cutting wood and trying to get a really good measurement is that don't worry about the first cut it's never going to be right just make sure it's not too small you can always correct it after most of the time the first time you cut something it's not going to be right so cut it and just work away at it until it is right it's getting cold now I've got my hat winter is coming Lovely sunshine though. I still need to screw in the retaining blocks which hold the beam in place on one beam. So I have to take up all this deck and then I think later on, or quite soon, we're gonna lift the beams onto the boat.
There's my mask. I've actually done a really bad job of this. Uh, I realised what I was doing wrong. I was coming off the edge and that was picking these little bits off. So I said to myself, just don't go off the edge. And then I went off the edge again. But it's not to worry. I just, uh, I'm, I'm gonna take a bit of an angle off this wood and I'll take the angle off here and uh, put that on the front. So yeah, kind of sucks. But I'm gonna keep these pieces and glue glue this in. So the boat's bows actually have a 45 degree angle in them so it looks kind of brutalist the way that it is so I will uh, take the 45 off here to rescue this which I've knocked out. Unfortunately this can't be rescued so I'll glue that piece back in and this bit of filler. There are a few knots which need a little bit of filler also. I'll do that now, it's probably not the best time to do it though to be honest because it's probably going to be a, a moist evening. It's going to be interesting to see how the cold weather affects this epoxy repair because the epoxy is already super thick, viscous. Pretty coated. So it's not really set. <laughs> I didn't even put any filler in that hole really. Such an annoying filler of things. So I went out shopping today, got loads of stuff. All the stuff that I'm gonna to need to finish this beam job. And it's gonna be a lot of work. A lot of these jobs, they start off with the excitement of getting the materials. And then you're like, oh, all right, I have to do the work now. Then you start to think to yourself, how are you gonna drill a hole for a bolt at 90 degrees through a beam which is 150 millimeters high and so you have to think of ways and just making sure that when you do it you do it right and for me that is really important because it's so tempting to rush things so last night i was researching how to use a router even though there really 
intuitive and I've used it before but quite badly and basically what I learned in a nutshell is if you're taking off any sizable piece of matter from the wood you should do it in increments and also you have to go a certain way around the grain because the blade cuts so to avoid any tears you need to go a certain way however this beam is laminated so I'm not quite sure which way to go all right No! Pretty successful first pass. I'm learning. Ah, that's all the way. So this epoxy is not set properly because of the temperature. Because it's not set, it's very sticky and tacky when I try and run the saw thing over it. So, little idea. Some fairly liquid. Get some of that slidey action on there. And on the rest of the wood, why not? Am I stupid by doing this or is this actual genius? I'm sure not many people have to use their circular saw on tacky epoxy, but anyway, let's give it a try. I really hope the wood doesn't split. Now that I've smudged ferro liquid into this wood, which I'm going to have to epoxy, <laughs> oh, it really helped with the thing, but I didn't think not to put it here where I wouldn't be cutting, so that's probably soaked into the wood. Can I put epoxy over ferro liquid? <laughs> Let me know. That's a bit of a lip that I've left there, so. cheapest sandpaper available <laughs> just crumbles off this way you buy expensive sandpaper This is all I've got done in a day. The sun's going down. I've routed the beam. And uh, I've been to the shops, fed myself, and done all the other essential things. <laughs> is that normal? Please tell me it's normal. I also got these pieces of wood, which this beam will bolt into. I have two options. I have this Douglas fir. So basically what's gonna happen is, this gets screwed into this cross beam and then it gets bolted through here on this huge beam <laughs> so I have Douglas fir or I have this which uh, in Dutch is called Azobi which is used for fence posts it's used outdoors it's very incredibly rock resistant 
more so than Douglas fir. Douglas fir is an outdoor wood which is rock resistant naturally, it's very light, it's easy to work with but it's not as strong. It's difficult to get the right diameter, I could get a bigger diameter and plane it down but I'm just not very good at playing it to be honest. I'm not sure what to use. This? The diameter is not very good on this. Or this? And the weight difference is ridiculous. This is so heavy. And it, I got it pre-cut at the shop. I think this might be the way to go with this big block here. I think that's going to be the most solid. I do worry as well about putting extra weight on deck. So putting this huge beam on here is adding a lot of weight. But I do plan to have my decks quite minimal. Just a very flat deck. My main priority is the safety of the rig. <laughs> I don't want to have any accidents with masts falling down. So that's why I'm overdoing this. Apart from this, everything is super strong. It's just those chain plate places that I was doing. Are they strong enough? We'll see. I'm going to do a lot of testing before I go sailing. But yeah, it's scary, you know. I want to take my time over this stuff. Uh, I want to make progress but I have to make sure what I'm doing is right. I think I'll go with the oversized option. <laughs> the only thing is I need to order stainless steel lag screws because I need big screws for this stuff. It is so heavy. It is so heavy. It's ridiculous. It's not like Iroko or anything else. It's, it's an absolute chunk. It's like concrete. So I'm just ordering the lag screws for the support pieces and uh, there's the option here on this proper well it's called RVS Palace. RVS is like inox or stainless steel. In France they call it inox. Uh, in the UK obviously stainless steel and in the States but yeah here in the Netherlands it's RVS which is rust free steel or rust free style. There's two options. A2 or A4. A4 is more for marine purposes. A2 is a, a different type of stainless steel for marine applications, your bolts and stuff. The ideal, let's say the optimum is A4. There's not much work that I can be doing on the boat today or over the next few rainy days. Still stuff I can be doing though. Thanks to Peter who owns this Warham catamaran here. One of the nicest men in the yard. Not just because he's got a Warham. <laughs> he's lent me his car, his little Renault Twingo. So I need some faster setting epoxy. I also need two engines. Not sure if the engines will fit in the car. Do a little bit of online shopping, see if I can find a good couple of engines, but yeah. Need to get loads of bits, loads of screws and stuff. That I've, I mean, I got the big ones that I ordered the other day, but it's just so much, so much every day for getting something. And to screw the beam on as well, there's still a couple of things that I need. Here we have the chariot. A lot of people have mentioned uh, Mr. Boat Epoxy and there's a shop close to here, I don't know if it's the headquarters. A lot of local people, a couple of people online as well, so uh, gonna go check them out. It's gonna be a lot cheaper than the West System stuff, but uh, I need like, I need to use a lot to laminate those beams, so not laminate, but you know, epoxy coat. All right.
Yeah, really nice place and really helpful people. Really nice prices as well. We're we wobbling around. <laughs> got some scales. So I got three kilos of just regular epoxy and hardener. And it comes in these bottles. But I did also get like some pigment as well. So you can actually get pigment to put in the epoxy. Thought I'd give it a try. Epoxy by nature is not UV resistant. So if you put it somewhere that's exposed to the sun, it's just gonna crack and not gonna be very good. But um, I have this uh, UV blocker which you can put in. So you only need to put 1% of that in there and then should protect your epoxy from the sun. Amazing. And uh, yeah, of course, like mixing cups, I think they threw the mixing cups in for free. Nice to have some epoxy that does not cost the earth. So it was three kilos of epoxy, the pigment, pigment UV stuff, uh, a couple of other bits and bobs, and it was about uh, 80 euros. I was surprised. This is daunting for me, just because of my lack of experience, but I'm doing everything in small steps and carefully. So I ordered those screws, which are eight mil screws. And because this is hardwood, you pre-drill the hole really close to the diameter of the screw. So I'm actually drilling through the hardwood with a 7.5 mil drill bit. And because the beams are softwood, I'll drill the pre-drill holes at about four mil. So three screws in each mast bolty downy on her thing. Fingers crossed I can get everything lined up and I just have to be very precise, which is against my nature, but uh, let's see how this turns out. Fingers crossed. Okay, so this is the beam that I fixed with that unscarfed joint at the front and I left the screws in so hopefully when I drill, drill through I don't hit them because if I do that I'm not going to be able to drill through them. Also, I trekked myself to a nice new drill and it makes a lot of difference. And also, this is nice also drilling into the other beam so I can see if there's any rot in the beams and there isn't any so far. So hopefully there's no screws at the end of these holes. Good. Good. I think I just kissed the screw, but that's good. Okay. I'm gonna put epoxy in all these holes first, and then just screw everything up. Hopefully not screw everything up, but you know what I mean. I'm gonna go with my West System slow setting epoxy just so I have more working time. It can be quite scary otherwise. So I'll prime the pump. Whoop, that's okay. Prime this one. Whoop. Yeah, okay, good. Super gloopy. I'm also just gonna put half a scoop of this in just to make it more, I don't know, like a glue. And to try and get it in the holes, I'm gonna put it in this icing bag.
So next week you'll see me bolt down the beam and also start working on the engine boxes again uh, because I mean the weather and also I need to do a calculation with the mass foot whether to put it at an angle or not I need to get my sails so that I can work out whether to put it's called mast rake so yeah a lot to do and uh, it's not easy with the weather but it is kind of making me a little bit more resourceful with my time and doing a lot of buying materials that I need when it's rainy going out to get this stuff still haven't got my engines yet but I'm keeping my eye on a few I think I'm going to get a couple of used ones because I'm not really going to be set, uh, using the boat under engine that much. I would like obviously a degree of reliability uh, but having two engines so yeah it doesn't really make much sense uh, forking out four grand per engine so I think I can get one for about 1,300 each so that's really not too bad. Uh, Alright well yeah thanks so much for watching I really really appreciate that you watch these videos that you subscribe and yeah thanks to you guys the coffee givers the PayPal givers uh, patrons a super thanks as well and the YouTube videos thank you so so much obviously all the money that I get from you guys apart from you know the stuff that I need to live perhaps uh, buy myself a new hat <laughs> um, yeah makes my life so much easier and uh, not sure if I could do this without you so thank you so much and uh, yeah see you next week